In this tutorial, we're going to recreate a logo from one of the most famous educational video games of all time. Perfect. So we'll start out by right clicking in the media pool, going to new fusion composition, double click on that and you'll jump into fusion. I've got a fusion comp already open, so I'm going to start from here. And the first thing is you're going to want a text node dragged in here. Font is really important on this one. So let's type in our text. I'll press one to preview that. And I'm using something called single fighter. So you could download this font for free, or you could find something that's similar. I'm going to scale it and decrease the line spacing. Also, things aren't quite lining up how I want, just the way that the T is shaped here. So what I'm going to do is click on this button here, and then you could see that you can select individual letters and you could use the arrow keys to shift them over. Just note that when the letters get really close to each other, you might be selecting two rows of letters. So just drag around the tops. That way, you know, you got the top line selected, hit the arrow keys. You could also move up and down if you need to. And if you want to grab this font for yourself, defont.com has got it right there for you for free. So I don't want these little dots in my way anymore. So I'm going to hit this button to turn that off. And we want to make this a little bit more dynamic. So we can click on our layout here and find rotation and start to mess around with this a bit here on the Y, on the Z. All right, so that looks better. Let's now click and drag a background node in here. And I'm going to press two to preview the background on the right. I'm going to switch from solid color to gradient. I am going to make it a radial gradient. All right, we could zoom out a bit here and put this in the right spot. And I'm going to give this a color from white to orange to red. So white, click here once. And then in this one, I'll make it something like that. And then we'll click on this one, make it red. So I want this color inside of my text. Click and drag output to output here. I'll get a merge. Click on the merge, press Control T. Press two to preview the merge. Press Control T if you need to switch one on top of the other. Maybe I'll center my text up a little bit better. I can bring it up a bit here. In our merge, go to our operator and change this to mask back to the background. And if this needs to get re-centered, I kind of want the bright white area to be here. I don't know, something like this, I think looks good. We're getting the really red areas here. Okay, let's give ourselves a little bit more room here because I want to take this background and I want to merge it with a fast noise. So I'm going to click and drag fast noise out here. Actually, let's have this on top. I'll click the output to the output so we get a merge. Let's press one for our fast noise, the preview it on the left, and I'm gonna to go to color, and I'm gonna bring this alpha up here. Click on the merge, press one to preview that on the left. I'm gonna change the apply mode to overlay. Let's click on our fast noise, click on our noise tab up here, go to scale and adjust that. We can go to detail and bring that up, go to contrast and brightness. All right, so I might need to go higher than 20. Let's try 40. I want to get a fair amount of detail in here, but I really need to go to the next step before I worry about settings here too much. And the next step is clicking on our merge and adding a directional blur. So shift spacebar, D-I-R-E, directional blur. Press one to preview that. And we're going to go from linear to zoom and give it some length. Let's say, I don't know, 0.5. All right, so we can adjust the center also, and we could do it by clicking and dragging here. Okay, so now we're getting these streaks inside the letters. And at this point, you can come in and go back to the fast noise. You could see how uh, adjusting your contrast, your scale and detail. It's always good to start with a low detail and only keep adding it until you don't see any improvements. And then you could stop with that. Let's try 60 for the scale. Now what I want is a version of this text that has a black outline, but I can't just add an outline to what I've got so far. So I need to make an instance. What I'm going to do is select this, press control C to copy, and then I'll click off of everything. Control shift V and I've got my instance here. I'm going to press one to preview this text on the right. I'm going to press two to preview the instance text on the left. And what I want to do is go into shading, click on number two, and I want to enable outline, but I don't want it on my original. So I'm going to uncheck that. 
right click on enable and click on D instance. And now when I check the outline on, I see it's only here, not there. That's what we want. I'm going to take the color and drag it to black and maybe up the thickness a little bit here. Now with instance text selected, I'm going to use a Crocodove node. If you don't want to use the Crocodove plugin, you could actually use the real 3D in DaVinci Resolve because you can extrude 3D text and you could just make the extrusion black. The Crocodove node is going to make it a lot faster and I'm going to use that now by holding down shift and space bar, extrude and press two to preview that. I wanted a solid color, but I want it to be black and I want it to be radial and I want to change the length here and I'm going to drag this arrow to change the direction. So let's merge this extrude into this merge by clicking and dragging output to the output. And I know I want this to be on the bottom. Green is on top. So click on the merge, press control T and let's actually select the merge and press two to preview that in our second viewer. So the next step is gonna help get rid of some of these small gaps in here. Make sure that last merge is selected, shift space bar, alpha mat shrink and grow. So let's press two to preview that. It's definitely worth checking out the different options here and seeing how they work. I'm gonna start with closing and use the shape as circle and drag this radius up. Okay, so I just wanna to get to the point where that last little inside part closes up. And now I wanna get an outline around these black shapes. But before I do that, I think we could boost up the colors in here a bit. So I'm gonna go back, click on background, and I'm gonna select this middle orange, and I'm gonna make it more of a yellow, a really bright yellow, maybe crunch that in a bit, and then maybe click one time in here. And you could see when you click in between the colors, you see between the yellow and the red, the natural orange that should occur there. But you could see you can boost up the saturation a bit there. It may pull this over a bit. Maybe take this white, drag that just a bit. All right, I think we got a little bit more drama going on here. And I'm actually going to borrow this background. So I'm going to control C, click over here and deselect everything. Control V. I'm going to take my alpha mat and press one to preview that on the left. I'm going to take this background and press two to preview it on the right. And I don't want this to be radial. I want this to be linear. I'm going to get rid of the white, click and drag that up. Okay. And I'll worry about getting that perfect later. I want to click and drag the output of this mat into the mask of the background. And then I want an erode dilate shift space bar. So the erode dilate, we can make sure we click on it, press two to preview it, drag this out a little bit. Now we want to see what this looks like underneath this one here. Click the output of this alpha mat to the output of erode dilate. And now let's click our merge and press two to preview that. So you can see now we've got that outline. And if we want, we could come back into the background and make some adjustments here. All right, so we decide when does the yellow start. We could also adjust this, get it looking exactly how we want. Maybe a little bit more fall off. Okay, so we got this nice outline that changes color from top to bottom. Now let's add just a little bit of a subtle lighting effect overall. I'm gonna create another background. I'll just click and drag one out here and I'll press two to preview it. I also want this masked out with this alpha matte node. So I'll click the output here, drag it onto this blue triangle to get that mask. This I want to click on type, gradient, go for radial. I'm gonna give it a darkish reddish brown color and I'll click on my second color. I'm gonna make that black. Let's change this alignment. All right, maybe, maybe this color is a little too dark. I'll bring this up a bit. Now, what I wanna do is merge this back in. So click the output of the background, output of the merge. This merge, our apply mode, we'll set that to screen. Also click two to preview the merge. And we can see we're getting a nice little subtle lighting effect here. Maybe it's not subtle enough. I'll go back to the background and bring this up a bit here. Okay, could also adjust the color. Now you can come back and change this to whatever you want. Perfect. 